Okay, we have one task remaining before we can run our simulation with muscles. We need to determine the initial states of the muscle models, an initial activation and an initial CC length for each muscle model. Um, before we do that, I noticed a couple mistakes that I made here. Um, one, I forgot to enter in a value for FT for the fast twitch fiber fraction for my two muscles in my model here. Um, these are variables, the fraction of, of fast twitch fibers comp uh, comprising a muscle, are variables that you can find in uh, the biomechanics and, and muscle physiology literature. Um, there's unfortunately not a huge amount of uh, studies on them. These are difficult data to obtain. Um, there is one uh, well-known, well-cited uh, study um, by Johnson et al. in the 1970s that has a, a large number of data on uh, fiber compositions for a large number of muscles in the human lower limb. Um, I don't have a PDF of that study to share with you, unfortunately, but I do have the data for it in a, a spreadsheet here that I've constructed. Um, it's this column here. And then for the muscles, we can go to the left here. And for gluteus maximus, it says that's about 24.8% fast twitch fibers. And for vastus lateralis, it says that's about 51.7%. Uh, so 0.248 for glutes and 0.517 for vasti. Um, also, evidently, MATLAB now has a built-in function called gamma, and so it gets fussy when I try to assign a numerical value for gamma and use it um, as a variable. So I'm going to rename that gam, and then also I'm going to go to my um, model function here and change all my gammas to gam. And then there's, I think, a couple more of them down here in the, yeah, in the force velocity curve. Okay. Um, also, in several places here in my um, muscle model loop, there were some parameters that need to be indexed on a muscle-specific basis uh, that are not indexed on a muscle-specific basis. Uh, this happened from copying over this code from the uh, homework muscle model where we just had the one muscle. Um, here we have two muscles, and so we have uh, two values for parameters like the uh, unloaded SEC length. So LU here can't just be LU. MATLAB won't know which value I want it to, to draw here in this comparison, so I have to tell it I specifically want it to be the value of the current muscle. And i got to do that again here. Um, KSEC also has a muscle-specific value. Um, down in my force length curve here, uh, the optimal CC length has a muscle specific value. And then also here, my max isometric force has a muscle specific value. And so do all of my optimal CC lengths there in the force velocity curve. Okay. Um, I think that's all of them. Um, if I forgot any, it'll let us know when we actually go to run the simulation, but I think that's um, all of those ones there we need to correct. Okay, um, with that done, we are ready to move on to our final task here, or at least our, our final task at this stage of creating the model. There's, there's additional tasks after this one, but our final uh, task here at this stage of determining the initial uh, muscle model states. So for each one of our muscles, we need an initial activation and an initial um, CC length. So let's go to our kind of go loading launching function here. And for the initial states, um, these are so far just our initial kinematic states, our generalized coordinates and speeds. So we'll call those initial kinematic states. And we'll call this our vector of initial states. This will eventually contain our muscles too. And here let's define um, initial muscle activations. Um, the first simulation that we're gonna do here is a simulation of a squat jump. Um, the model is gonna start in a static squatted posture and then perform a jumping motion. Um, the qualifier there that I said of a static squatted posture is important. Um, it's just going to start in a, a static squat. Um, that's why we have all these velocities set to zero. And if it's a, a static squat, the model is just holding itself there in that pose. 
Um, that also implies that all of the uh, muscle velocities are zero, the muscle forces are not changing, the, the muscle lengths and, and CC lengths and, and are not changing, the CC velocities are zero, and the muscle activations are not changing. They're not necessarily zero, but they're, they're not changing. They're set at some uh, value. And so we're going to set the initial muscle activations here, A, equal to our initial muscle excitations from up here in UPARS, um, saying that our activation is equal to our excitation, meaning there's no stimulus for our activation to change like when we're in a, a static squatted posture. Okay. Um, we will initially change these, or we'll, we'll eventually change these initial um, excitations and, and thus these initial activations to be different values once we uh, have a model that interacts with the ground and, and uh, needs to support its weight against gravity we'll eventually uh, set these to different values but for now we're going to set the initial activations equal to the initial excitations which are set equal to the minimum excitation. Okay that one's pretty easy. Um, setting the initial CC lengths is a little bit more complicated. Um, we're going to do this by looping over all of our muscles again. So for I equals 1 to 2. And our task here is that, remember, our SEC force is some function of the SEC length. And our CC force is some function of the activation and the CC length and the CC velocity. Um, specifically, our CC force is the max isometric force times activation times where I am on force length times where I am on force velocity. Okay. Um, my force velocity value here, since it's a static squat, an isometric squat, um, all of my CC velocities are going to be zero in that squat. So FV here is just going to be one. And I'm going to know activation from up above here. I know my initial uh, muscle activations. Um, I know my initial, or sorry, I know my uh, max isometric force. That's just a parameter. And uh, FL in here, this is some function of the CC length. Um, LSEC, remember that's equal to um, the overall muscle length. We'll just call that L minus LCC. So technically, both of these forces are just functions of the uh, CC length. And remember, these forces are also equal to each other. FCC equals FSEC. Uh, and since we have a pination angle, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. FSEC is FCC times the cosine of the pination angle. But remember, that pination angle is also um, itself just a function of the CC length. So take home message from all of this is that there is one single specific value for the CC length that will satisfy my equilibrium equation here. If you guys hear any tapping in the background, that's my, my dog moving around on the hardwood floor, sorry. Um, take home message here is that if you have a um, equilibrium between the forces here in the CC and the forces in the SEC, there's only one specific value of CC length that given these initial kinematics, which define the muscle length, and given these initial activations, which we just specified as the initial excitations, um, one specific CC length given those other initial conditions that will satisfy this uh, force equilibrium. So in this equation here for each muscle, there's only one unknown thing, just the CC length. And so we can solve this equation uh, for the CC length. Um, it ends up being a, a highly nonlinear function. So solving it uh, algebraically and analytically is, is not the most straightforward thing in the world. But we can solve it uh, numerically using a nice function in MATLAB uh, called VPA solve and uh, get the initial value for CC length here that we need to have the model in a, in a static position. Okay, um, how do we do that? We first define our CC length as a symbol. And next, we are going to um, do some calculations involving this symbol. Um, specifically, we are going to 
define our pination angle. And we're just going to go to our muscle model functions here to define these things to make sure that I don't make a mistake and screw it up. So that's our equation for our pination angle. Um, CC length here is just going to be defined as a single symbol, symbolic variable, so we don't need to index it for each muscle. We'll just reset it in the loop here. Um, knowing my pination angle, I can then compute my SEC length. So we'll copy that over. And again here, this is just going to be a single variable. Um, you can see here to compute my SEC length, I need to know my overall uh, muscle origin to insertion length. So let's copy that over here. And we're not going to index that as a function of each muscle either. We just need the current length there. Okay, knowing the CC or sorry, knowing the SEC length, I can calculate the SEC force right here. And we're not going to index that either. Um, knowing the SEC force, I can now start calculating my CC force, which is the max isometric force times the initial activation times my uh, position on the force length curve. And then if for the full equation here, this would include uh, the uh, force velocity factor. But remember, we're assuming this is an initial uh, static posture. And so the force velocity factor in this case is going to be equal to 1, so it drops out of there. And so to calculate my CC force, I need to go over here and grab my expression for force length right there. Let's move that over here. And I can then calculate um, the CC force. Then I can use VPA solve here to compute my initial CC lengths, which I'm storing in this uh, LCC init a variable. Um, the output is not double precision, so we will convert it from a, a symbol to double precision. And then VPA solve here wants uh, three arguments. It's going to want me to tell it the equation that I want it to solve. And so we're going to say that FCC times cosine Q equals FSEC. Um, then it's going to want me to tell it the variable that I want to solve that equation for. We want LCC. And then it's going to want me to give it an initial guess for what I think the value of LCC might be. And we'll say, well, it's probably pretty close to the optimal CC length. And close all that out. And then let's clear LCC for the next time in the loop. I don't know if we necessarily need to do that, but we're going to do it anyway. And then end. And OK, we don't uh, want to run the rest of the code after this. So I'm going to stick a return in there so that it stops right here. And let's just see if this uh, runs. It's a fairly complex bit of coding, so it's possible I might have uh, made a mistake in here. So let's just run that and see what we get. And it beeped about something. Index exceeds number of arrays. What did I do there? Uh, looks like I left a uh, left an indexing term on LCC. I don't need that there. Let's try that again. Okay, no errors there. And let's see what it gave me for LCC in it. Uh, it gave me some reasonable values for my initial CC lengths. Uh, point about 0.19 for the uh, gluteus and about 0.07 for the vasti. Those are reasonably close to my um, optimal lengths there, so we're not, not too far out of what might be plausible for those uh, CC lengths. Okay, so there we now have our initial values for um, the states of the muscles, the initial activations, and the initial uh, CC lengths. So let's uh, plug those in here into our vector of initial states. So initial activations and initial 
cc lengths. Okay, and we are now, believe it or not, uh, ready to run a uh, muscle actuated simulation. So we can remove our last step here on our to-do list for adding muscles to the model, and we are ready to try it out. Um, this is kind of a wonky pose here. I've got the knee in uh, hyperextension, and so I'm going to set it into a more reasonable pose here. Let's give it a 45 degrees of flexion at both of our joints there. And let's shorten this up a little bit. And let's make it so that our muscles uh, do not switch their times at all here. So I'm making the uh, bang on times here uh, beyond the simulation time. So the muscles will just uh, stay at their initial excitation, the entire, or the initial excitation for the entire uh, simulation here. Okay, let's run that and see what we get. Oh, didn't like something. Incorrect scaling here. Uh, doesn't like something there. What's wrong? Oh, I've still got KSEC here in my uh, in my loop where I compute my uh, muscle mechanics in my uh, uh, model function here. And remember, I moved that over to uh, being calculated in my uh, parameter values here. So let's take that out of there and try that again. And still not happy. Okay, um, my states that I put down there in my uh, output state rates vector, it's not happy with the dimensions of them. Let's try transposing the new ones that we added there. And run that again. And there we go. Now you can see there that the model is uh, sitting here in space and is... Um, moving its joints very slowly and very subtly. Let's let's extend the time here and, and watch that for a little bit longer. So watch the hip joint there and watch the knee joint there. It's very slowly and subtly um, extending them there. Um, now, why is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because the initial um, activation and initial excitation of the muscle models here is non-zero. Okay. So this is producing a small non-zero force in both of those muscles, muscle groups, the uh, gluteus, which extends the hip, and the vasti, which flexes the knee. So the gluteus is going to be moving the hip in this clockwise direction there, and the vasti is going to be moving my knee in this counterclockwise direction there. And that's exactly the motion that we see when we simulate this model here. Okay, let's make it a little bit more exciting, and let's have our muscles bang on here. And let's not let them bang on for too long. We will start it at uh, 0.55 and uh, 0.65 for the uh, vast eye. Let's see what happens here. Taking a little bit longer to finish here, and we'll see what happens. May or may not actually finish. Sometimes they run into uh, numerical problems. We're missing some elements of the model that would uh, prevent some of these things right now. Okay, I don't think it's going to finish. Let's cancel this one. And let's make these times a little bit longer. Let's make this 0 0.62 and this one 0.67. So there you saw the model again moving very slowly, but then when it got very near the end of the simulation, it did this very abrupt jerky motion. Let's watch that again. Okay. Now the reason that the model wasn't finishing integrating when I had these muscles banging on at earlier times is because you can see here, even with the vasti only maximally excited for the last uh, 0.03 seconds of the simulation, it got the knee into a great deal of hyperextension here. Okay. Um, that's making the vasti muscle 
very, very short, um, much shorter than it would physiologically ever be because a real knee can't hyperextend by that much. And this is causing numerical problems when it's attempting to solve uh, these uh, state equations here when the muscle is at a, an unrealistically short length. Um, this highlights how we um, still have some things that we need to add to our model still. Um, in particular, we need to add some passive stiffness to the joints, um, representing things like ligaments and uh, bony geometry and bones budding into each other, as well as just the passive stiffness of muscles themselves that uh, prevent us from doing things like uh, hyperextending the knee like this or, or uh, like moving the hip into to too wide of ranges of motion. Okay. So that's still on our uh, to-do list here. We need to um, add passive joint stiffness. And also, if we, let's go back and run another simulation here to demonstrate um, another thing that we still need. And let's turn our gravity back on here. If I run my simulation here, you can see that even with my muscles in the model, the model still falls uh, straight through the ground and has nothing stopping it from moving through the ground there. And so we need to add a contact model, a ground contact model. So that our model can uh, interact with the ground. Okay. So those are our uh, two remaining steps here that we need to add before the model is complete and before we are ready to uh, do simulations of the vertical jumping motion. So we will get into uh, those things in the next video.